He's an Oscar award-winning director who has become famous for his long-running collaborations with actors, as well as his focus on Italian-American subject matter. Don't overcook it. Overcook is no good. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're taking a look at the critically acclaimed career of Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese was born on November 17, 1942, in Queens, New York. In his youth, he attended a Catholic high school in the Bronx and sought to one day join the priesthood. However, numerous visits to the local movie theater stirred an even greater passion for cinema, which led him to study at NYU. There, he obtained a master's degree in film directing. Scorsese began creating full-length films in 1968 with Who's That Knocking at My Door. The feature not only began his career, but also set the stage for several long-running collaborative bonds, beginning with his former classmate Harvey Keitel. In 1972, Scorsese directed the Depression-era picture Boxcar Bertha for Roger Corman, an experience that taught the principles of B-movie filmmaking. Fortunately, this training experience prepared Scorsese for the rough filming conditions of 1973's Mean Streets, a film that truly established Scorsese's signature style of rapid editing. It also began yet another fruitful partnership, this time with actor Robert De Niro. Hey Jimmy, you know you got a good friend here. The duo then went on to release their iconic film, Taxi Driver. The movie became a wild success for the pair and firmly established his reputation as a filmmaker by winning him four Oscar nominations and the Palme d'Or Award at the 1976 Cannes Film Festival. Due to his newfound fame and reputation, Scorsese found himself in a position to take on his first big budget project. He chose to create a musical tribute to his hometown. Unfortunately, New York, New York turned into a devastating box office failure and drove Scorsese into a long period of depression and cocaine use. In the following years, Scorsese dabbled in documentary filmmaking with projects like The Last Waltz. However, his creative energy finally rebounded with the making of 1980's Raging Bull. The picture ultimately became one of the greatest sports movies of all time due to Robert De Niro's involvement both on and off screen as the actor helped Scorsese kick his cocaine addiction. Though Raging Bull was a huge success, one of Scorsese's biggest failures was his next project, The King of Comedy. Jerry? Jerry! Nobody's gonna help you. The desperate need for a commercial success then prompted Scorsese to take on his first mainstream project, The Color of Money, starring Paul Newman. This box office draw enabled Scorsese to find financial backing for his deeply personal religious project, The Last Temptation of Christ. However, the film spurred violent backlash and was banned in several countries. With mixed results behind him, Scorsese entered the 90s with newfound focus that enabled him to put together a string of high-profile successes, such as his gangster epic Goodfellas and 1995's Casino. These films have come to be considered some of the greatest achievements of his career, yet with each success, Scorsese had also taken on more questionable projects, such as 1997's Kundun, which confused and alienated many of his fans. Still, as the millennium came to an end, Scorsese crafted his biggest venture to date. Gangs of New York not only got nominated for numerous awards, but marked his first collaboration with actor Leonardo DiCaprio, who would also star in his critically acclaimed biopic The Aviator in 2004. In 2007, The Departed finally granted Scorsese his first Academy Award for Best Director. Could, could you double check the envelope? In 2010, Scorsese reunited with DiCaprio for the fourth time for the film adaptation of the novel-inspired thriller Shutter Island and was announced as the director for the highly anticipated biopic centered on the life of Frank Sinatra. 